Shalom Shalim, my name is David, and today's title is In Process of Time. First, let me give all praises and honor to the one true God, Elohim. Let me give all praises and honor to the one raised up by Elohim and crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, my Savior Yeshua. Let me also give honor to my father, Ishai, who loved me as a son and taught me the ways of the Lord. As John the Baptist prepared the way for Yeshua the Messiah, so do I prepare the way for Elijah the prophet. Hear my words so that ye may be prepared for the judgment that is to come. In process of time, which is the trial of your works. For it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. And that comes from Proverbs 25, 2. This verse comes from Isaiah 40, 21, and it reads, Have you not known? Have you not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Hath you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. The Chariot of Israel. This light I giveth is only for a moment. It will shineth upon the soul and give light. It shall multiply in its season for God's glory. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have I set all things in place, saith the Lord. Those things that shall come have been spoken of before this time. As I gave to my prophets of old, I give to you this day a sword of vengeance and a sword of glory. Accept that what I send you, for it is good and I shall bless you in your time. Be humble, my son, in all your doings, for your doings shall be my doings for my glory. Amen. And here is the table of contents page. So this is um, this is a book. So in order to make it so that it can reach everyone um, without having to charge anything, it's been placed in a PowerPoint format on YouTube in a video form. So with the book, you know, you have a table of contents. So I won't read all the contents, but you can see this is where it begins, acknowledgments, introduction, Ezekiel at the river, Goes over the four faces, Senate bearer, men of war, raising of the tabernacle, and so forth. All the way, building the entire encampment up, according to Ezekiel chapter 1 and selected verses throughout scripture. All the way to the Pentateuch. General introduction in process of time. The Holy Grail, Masay Merkaba, Havenu Shalom Aleikum, which means we bring peace upon you. Masay Merkaba has for centuries been called the illegal chapter by traditional Jewish rabbis. The chapter speaks so vividly of the Moshiach Yeshua as YHWH. For this reason, many rabbis teach that those who study Ezekiel chapter 1 risk insanity as a curse. But the truth of the matter is, one who studies the illegal chapter may find the Holy Grail encrypted in its text. What better place to hide the most sacred gift of Elohim and his holy word, the Torah, or the Holy Bible? Many have touched and read about the Holy Grail, only not to see it or feel its presence encrypted from their natural eyes and touch. We bring you the sacred gift called by man, the Holy Grail, in Masse Merkava. Chosen and Called Over 2,000 years have gone by to bring this letter, in process of time, to the entire human race. The following pages reveal Elohim's true Holy Grail to all mankind. The greatest of all discoveries known to mankind is revealed through Ezekiel chapter 1, also known as the illegal chapter, 
the working of the chariot. Why now? The dispensation of the twelfth wheel, called the will of Gad, is approaching all mankind. A troop should be gathered together in the great harvest of souls here on earth. In process of time, which is the trial of works, was given by Elohim so that the bride may hear the voice of the chosen one in these last days. The revealing of the Masi Merkava is the beginning of the dispensation prophecy of Gad. The Masi Merkava's understanding and knowledge is given by Elohim to his chosen kings, servants, high priests, and chosen prophets. No man can understand, nor believe, receive, or obtain the knowledge of the Holy Grail in the Masi Merkava, except Elohim reveals the truth to him or her as his chosen and called. We pray without ceasing that you have been chosen and called in the prophecy of Gad, the gathering of the troop in these last days, the harvest of souls. Shalom. Ishai. The Holy Grail, Ezekiel chapter 1, Masse Merkava. Ezekiel at the river. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Shabar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river, Shabar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. The man clothed with linen. The dates of Ezekiel's opening are very precise in verses 1 through 2 of the historical references concerning the 30th year, 4th month, 5th day, and the 5th year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. Ezekiel's symbolic language of metaphors reveals a clue of great importance in verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest. Ezekiel the priest confirms that he is a high priest over the service of the tabernacle of testimony. The word from the Lord came in a vision expressly given unto him, which means specifically for the high priest, Ezekiel. The main duties of the high priest were as follows. The tabernacle being set up properly, the law enforced and taught, and number three, high priest could enter the Holy of Holies during atonement. These are three clues revealed by Elohim given to the man clothed in linen. The Holy Grail pattern was given to Moses in the mountain of God, Mount Sinai. Moses, also a man clothed with linen, was Elohim's servant. Now the pattern is given to the called and chosen of Elohim in these last days. Four faces. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. And on the east side we have, every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar, then the tribe of Zebulun. So here we have the first division, which is under the standard of the lion. And this is Judah, this is Issachar, and this is Zebulun.
on the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon, then the tribe of Gad. So here we have the second division. And the tribes that are under the second division are Reuben, the tribe of Simeon, and the tribe of Gad. And on the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, then the tribe of Benjamin. And here we have the third division, which comprises of the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Manasseh, and the tribe of Benjamin. And on the north side, the standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, then the tribe of Naphtali. So this is the fourth division, which comprises of the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Asher, and the tribe of Naphtali. In these camps, these tribes encamp on the north. Now that we have seen the four enzymes, now we're going to take a look at the standard bearer. And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. So here we see the standard bearer, Stefan standard bearer, to be conspicuous as a signal, to raise a beacon, lift up as an ensign, flag, banner, flagstaff, pole, sail, ensign, standard. We'll select the reading, see Isaiah 10, 18. We'll go, to, go down here and take a look at ensign, standard. A standard or pole with an attached object, the military standard or banner of a fighting unit. Take a look at the four living creatures. Four living creatures, their appearance was the likeness of a man. Who is that man? That is their father, Jacob, Israel. Hands of a man under their wings, holding the standard of their division upright overhead. There are the hands under their wings. Straight feet sole of the feet was like a calf's foot and that is the bottom of the standard pole sparkle like burnished brass so here we have the bottom of the standard pole sparkle like burnished brass and we see the calf's foot which means it could be stuck into the ground and we'll go more into that on the next page wings stretched upward means the standard pole planted in the ground or carried by the tribesmen. Three tribesmen plus one Levite equals four ensigns, or four faces, four sets of wings, four living creatures, which is man. So here we see this is the standard bearer of the camp of uh, Judah or on the east side because Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun would have all had this ensign. We see the banner, we see the attached object, we see the pole, and we see standard bearer, the likeness of a man. Who is that man? Jacob, because they are the children of Israel.
and they all have their father's likeness. So here is a closer look at the bottom of the enzyme pole. The sole of their feet was like a calf's foot. That's the bottom view. See the hand grips. And their feet were straight feet. Straight feet, the color of burnished brass. And as I said before, as a calf's foot, because as you see, you plant it into the ground. And that's why you needed the calf's foot. Men of War. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. So in this diagram that my father has drawn, we see the standard bear, which is man. Here's the standard bears. We see 16 of them. We also see the host, the men of war troops. It's the host, men of war troops. We notice they're on the outside, um, you know, able to take up defensive positions. We see the four rings or four wheels or four living creatures, or four divisions. So here we have the second creature or the second division, the second ring, and the rings were full of eyes. What are those eyes? Those are the eyes of the people in each division, the eyes of the people. So on the right side, we have the face of a lion, First division, the first creature. Left side, face of an ox. This is the third creature or the third division or third ring. And obviously, as my father notes, these are imaginary lines. So we have four divisions, four wing standards per division, four standard enzyme bearers per division. So here is a closer look inside one of the rings. And this particular ring is the ring of Judah. It's the first division. And here we see Issachar, Judah, Zebulun, and a Levite priest, all with the standard of the lion. As the noise of an host, this is the host inside the ring full of eyes, which are the eyes of the people around about the four enzyme bears. Hidden perimeter line represents the ring. This is a Levite priest. Host, a mass of persons or figuratively things, especially regularly organized for war, an army, company, host, service, soldiers, waiting upon war a warfare to mass an army or servants, assemble, fight, perform, muster, wait upon war. Likeness, they had the likeness of a man. Who was that man? Their father, Jacob, Israel, the children of Israel. The definition of likeness, resemblance, similarity, chiefly in appearance, Likeness to their late father, Jacob is the late father of all Israel. They have his likeness. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. And we have selected readings for this out of Numbers 9, 15 through 23. And on the day that the cloud and on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle namely the tent of the testimony 
And at even, even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that, the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the ch children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in their tents and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Raising of the Tabernacle of Testimony. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. The Levites first established the center X axis by using the north, south, and west boards of the tabernacle. The number of boards consisted of two even numbers, 20 and 8. North side and south side had 20 boards apiece, which were each divided at the 10 boards halfway mark. This gave the north side and south side straight line of the encampment. The west end had 8 boards, which were divided at the 4 boards halfway mark. This gave the west to each to east end to end bisecting the north side and south side straight line using the middle bar. A veil was hung to divide the north and south straight line by dividing the most holy from the holy place. Thus, the center x axis consisted of the middle bar in the mist and the veil. From this reference point, the entire encampment was formed or joined. So here we see we have an example of an area view. We have the middle bar right here. We have the veil. We have the x axis. And this is an imaginary dividing line which matches the halfway mark, which is at 10 boards north and south. Middle bar bisecting the north and south straight line. Once again, this is the middle bar. And we see the veil right here. And from this, a whole encampment was built. And the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end. That's Exodus 26, 28, and also 36, 33. And once again, we see the middle bar, with the four boards halfway mark, going from end to end. And he made the middle bar to shoot, shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And so we know according to scripture, it had 20 boards. The bisecting point, and this is where the veil gets hung 
right here. X marks the spot right here. Here's the X axis. And once again, from this point, the entire encampment was built. 20 boards this way and eight boards Next is wheel one, the Levites forming of the inner courts. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another. So here we see the L equals lion, the man equals M equals man, O equals oxen, E equals is for equal. And this is all will one. This is just will one. Once again, we see the imaginary line. We see we have over in the west, we have Ephraim. Over in the north, we have Asher, which is understanding of the eagle. Also over in the north, we have Naphtali, which is understanding of the eagle. Once again, remember, this is just wheel one. There is a wheel two also, but right now we're focused on wheel one. Over in the east, we have the Lion of Judah. And over in the south, we have the Simeon under the standard of man. Same, we have Gad under the, under the standard of man. And these are in the south. Middle bar. Center axis of the middle bar joins each angular mark with a line bisecting at the middle bar center point. Example, Simeon joins or connects Asher. Gad joins or connects to Naphtali. So Simeon connects through the X axis to Asher. Gad joins or connects there's the X axis, Gad connects to Naphtali. Ephraim joins or connects X axis through the X axis. I mean, Judah connects to Ephraim. Ephraim connects to Judah. I don't know if I said that right. But either way, Ephraim and Judah connect through the middle bar. Right there. Every line which is imaginary, joins or connects through the x-axis. Enzyme placed in the ground by Levite priest around the tabernacle, distinguishing distance, which is length and degree angle of the inner court, also the wrath of Elohim to the congregation. Note, one indicates the first wheel, Join one to another. That comes out of Ezekiel 111. It translates to mean one angular mark connects toward the other angular mark. And here is angular. That right there. X marks the spot. Congregation, also known as their bodies. Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And this was selected from Numbers 2 2. So their bodies is the congregation facing inward to the tabernacle for the worship of Elohim. And their bodies comes from Ezekiel 123. If you go read that, you'll see their bodies. So we have the standard enzyme also represents wheel one. Once again, we're just on wheel one. 
see their bodies. This is the congregation. Their bodies, the congregation. And we'll see right here. This represents the congregation composed of women, elders, children, and young men. This is their bodies all facing toward the tabernacle for the worship of Elohim. Congregation pinches tents far off. This area of the encampment is called the tabernacle of the congregation, also the outer courts. And to define bodies or body, a group of persons or things, a group of individuals organized for some purpose. We see everything, everybody is facing towards the tabernacle of the congregation. And here is the inner courts or the Levites in camp. Two troops that covered their bodies. One of their bodies is the congregation, so it's saying two troops that covered the congregation. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two which covered on this side, and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies. So this diagram comes from Ezekiel chapter 123. We see my father has it color coded. So we have first division metaphor, second division metaphor. Third division metaphor right here, and right here, fourth division metaphor. To cover a position or situation affording protection from enemy, to guard from attack. So right here we see one had two that covered on this side. So these are the two that covered are the two troop units, and they're on this side. Once again, one had two that covered on this side, the two troop units on this side. And last but not least, one had two that covered on this side. Once again, the two troop units that covered, that protected from attack, guarded from an enemy. And we see two troop units, one had two that covered on that side. One had two that covered on that side. One had two that covered on that side. So when you're seeing this side, you're talking about this side of the encampment. And over here, this is what is known as that side of the encampment. Completed wheel one. So what we see is we see their bodies, their bodies, their bodies, which I remind you is the congregation. We see one had two that covered on that side their bodies. So this is one, two that covered on that side their bodies. And every one had two that covered on this side their bodies. Wheel one, there's one that covered on this side, their bodies. So this is their body. This is a covering troop unit to protect, to guard. And obviously what we said, their bodies is the congregation. Wings were joined one to another. This is the forming of wheel two. Their wings were joined one to another and they went. So we notice we have four living creatures, which are the four divisions represented by the four enzymes. So here is the third division. The division of the ox, here is the fourth division. Division of the eagle, here is the first division 
or the first creature. And it is under the lion. And here is the second division or the second creature. And it is under the man. Wings, which are all enzymes, were joined one to another. What does join mean? To connect as points by a line. So what do you do? You connect each enzyme by a line. So each enzyme is connected. Connecting all the enzymes by a line. Connecting all the enzymes. All the enzymes. Represents wheel one completion. So these are those which represents real one completion. Now wheel two is being completed. So once again, these are the four living creatures. First division, second division, third division, fourth division, or first creature, second creature, third creature, fourth creature. They went everyone straight forward. Will two being formed. Middle bar, all standard enzymes bisecting middle bar, joining both wheels with the tabernacle of testimony. So move straight forward to the tabernacle, the ox, and the lion because all divisions must be represented at the tabernacle so the lion enzyme goes straight forward to the tabernacle and because this one goes straight forward now this one has to come straight forward same thing on this side goes straight forward to the tabernacle since this one moves forward this one has to go straight forward to take up this position. And you have the star that has now been formed. The eagle and the man are already represented at the tabernacle. So the ox and the lion have to be represented at the tabernacle. So they go straight forward. Watchmen troops. Encampment wheel two, the watchmen troops. So this is wheel two, and these are the watchmen troops. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. Select the verse Exodus 19:6. So we see the first division of wheel two represented by the color purple, the second division represented by the color yellow, the third division represented by the color blue, and the fourth division represented by the color orange. Note, Sukkoth pattern of the encampment layout, total 30 sukkahs in the pattern. What does 30 represent? The high priest or priesthood. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And two covered their bodies. Once again, and two covered their bodies. Ezekiel 111. And so we see here, we know their bodies is the congregation. This is the young men, the women, the children, the older men. And we see wheel two covering their bodies. Remember the word cover had to do with protecting, guarding from attack. So it's covering their bodies. Wheel two, this is the hidden perimeter line of wheel two. Covering their bodies, wheel two covering their bodies. Wheel two covering their bodies, 
Once again, we have the center axis. And so this is a book. So, you know, with a book, you can actually go through it and you can flip back to the other pages, you know, to see the right here. You said see the color code of each division sidebar on page 48. So if you want to do that, you can just go back four pages and it'll be there. Wheel two represents the enzyme of the Watchmen tribes. They protect the farthest point of the encampment, perimeter and the backside of the congregation, which is their bodies. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. Their appearance and their work was as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And so right here, we have wheel one, perimeter. And here we have wheel two's perimeter. Let down their wings. This means the enzymes being placed in the ground when they encamped or when they stood still. Their work was as it were a middle, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. What was their work? Their work was the priesthood performing daily sacrifices or daily sacrificial offerings. So here we see the outer courts. Here we see the inner courts. Here we see the star. This is the Magan David. Polithites on the south side in the inner courts, Gershonites on the west side on the inner courts, Mererites on the north side in the inner courts. And of course, we have Moses and Aaron. A voice from the firmament that is the glory of Elohim. Aerial views of the holy encampment. So this is the holy encampment, men of war positions and directions. The Lord is my rock and fortress and my deliverer. The star of David, Machen Dawid, also known as, as the shield of David, has several shields of defense as an encampment. The two interlaced triangles have a flank frontal and possibly a rear attack for protection against enemies. This is not so with the square or the rectangular designs. They deploy one line of defense. And what that's speaking of is you have your first wheel of defense right here, the watchman troop, and you have your second wheel of defense. Once again, the watchman troop. So if someone tries to attack from here, you'll have the second wheel of defense, watchman troop, have a watchman troop, watchman troop, watchman troop. They will all defend this person coming right here or this army or whoever it is right here. The same thing all around. You come here, you got men of war right here. You try to go this way, you got these troops right here, right here, right here. You still have these troops right here, right here, right here. So it being in a circle, it allows to be defended all over. So the congregation will always be defended because you have troop eyes all around, regardless of where you come from. Here, and you still have troop eyes here, here, here. You got wheel two is the first wheel of defense. You have wheel one of the watchman troop is the second wheel of defense. 
Camp. The most common Hebrew word for camp is mahana, which probably comes from a root meaning to bend or curve. Hence, it is thought the Hebrew camp in semi-nomadic period was usually in a circle. Sukkah, a three-sided temporary structure. Large sukkah. Perimeter divided into four smaller sukkah perimeters for three-sided tents. So we have a large sukkah right here, divided into four smaller sukkahs or three-sided tents. So here we see their bodies, which is the congregation, which is comprised of women, children, elders. And we see the first division men of war right here. This is the first division men of war. We see the second division men of war right here. We see the third division men of war here. And we see the fourth division men of war here, right here, here. In here. Direction of men of war to protect. So once again, that's what these arrows are for. This is what we were speaking about. If an enemy tried to come from whatever angle, they're always in position to defend. Enzyme standard. There is an enzyme on every bisecting line. So remember you had the middle bar here, join one to the other, these enzymes, straight lines right across from each other, each one, enzyme, 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 it's joined and connected to another enzyme. Their work was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. We Once again, we know we have the first wheel right here, and we have the second wheel. Wheel two. We know that wheel two is the first wheel of defense, and wheel one is the second wheel of defense. And we know that the work was the priest's on the daily sacrifices, the sacrificial offerings, or making their offerings to Elohim. All right, so here he has um, placed the eye for Issachar in for Naphtali. So we have Reuben here in the south, and under the banner of the man is Simeon and Gad, along with Reuben. We have Judah in the east, and under under the um, the banner of the lion is also Zebulun and Issachar. In the north we have Dan, and under the banner of the eagle, along with Dan, is Asher and Naphtali. And we have Ephraim in the east. I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, in the west, and under the banner of the oxen with Ephraim we have. Benjamin and Manasseh. Holy encampment complete schematic. So here is a diagram my father did that shows a complete schematic of everything that we have went over. So you have one that had two that covered on that side of their bodies. So this is their bodies, their bodies. One had two right here and right here that covered. And then you have two covered their bodies. So you have wheel two covering their bodies, which is the congregation. West side, face of an ox. South side, face of a man. East side, face of a lion, and north side, face of an eagle.
Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit, which is the total sum, thereof round about, which is circuitous, shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Selected verses are from Ezekiel 43, 10 and verse 12. The Hebrew and English definition. Round about. As a noun, a circle, neighbor, or environs, but chiefly as adverbally with or without preposition around. Place round about circuitous compass on every side. I should have said circuit because that's what it says right here. Circuit compass on every side. Round about a circuitous route. To define circuitous is having a circular or winding course. Note. Ezekiel says, the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabar. And that's in Ezekiel 43, verse 3. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the courtyard. So Moses finished the work. The inner court of the tabernacle consisted of a six-sided hexagram from enzyme to enzyme. This is a circuitous route or winding course, also known as roundabout. And here is a diagram of the full holy encampment. So we see the six-sided hexagon that is roundabout. Right here we see Ephraim joins to Judah, Naphtali joins to Gad, Asher joins to Simeon. We see the first division, face of a lion, which comprises of Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. We see the second division, face of a man, which comprises of Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. We see the third division, face of an ox, which comprises of Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. And we see the fourth division, face of an eagle, which comprises of Dan, Naphtali, and Asher. Inner wheel consists of six tribes. Two standard tribes of the six, two standard tribes of the six are Judah and Ephraim. The ox and the lion are their ensigns. Outer wheel consists of six watchmen tribes. Two standard tribes of the six are Reuben and Dan. The eagle and man are their enzymes. So we see in between enzymes, there are three miles. Reuben to Simeon, three miles between this enzyme and this enzyme. Simeon to Zebulun, three miles in between. Zebulun to Judah, three miles in between. And from the enzyme of Judah to Issachar, three miles in between those enzymes. We see their bodies, which is a congregation facing inward worship of, of Elohim. We see the troops, the troop eyes facing outward for the defense to be able to defend. As you know, this is a hidden perimeter line. Center axis which is right here, where everything bisects. And so after having come all the way to this page, you should pretty much recognize everything that you see here because we have gone over everything that you see right here. You should recognize everything except for maybe the three miles in between and the 12 miles from crossing here and here. Everything else, you should recognize. All right. Shekinah glory. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face. 
and I heard a voice of one that spoke. And it came to pass, when they were going over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. In the thirty and seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel and Samaria, and reigned sixteen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, and his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon his throne, and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of the sickness whereof he died, and Joash the king of Israel came down unto him, and wept over his face, and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Hath ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, Elohim, in a pillar of a cloud that sitteth, abode, upon the circle, the holy encampment of the earth, and the inhabitants, which are the children of Israel, or children of Jacob, thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches, pitches out the heavens, which is the tent of the testimony, as a curtain, and spreadeth them out, tents of the congregation, as a tent to dwell in. To the house of Israel. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Thus saith the Lord God, This day I have shown Israel their family's house, the house of Israel, your father's coats of arms for each house, and the shield of King David. This day you must choose to hear these words or reject the truth. Sin lieth at the door, and judgment is of the Lord thy God. And all the congregation shall say, Amen.
This is a letter written by my father, Yishai. Shalom Shalim. As a servant of the one true God, Elohim, I am commanded to speak but with my most intimate love for you all. Please hear my voice. Knowing the absolute true truth brings judgment from the one true God, Elohim. For judgment, I am, which is truth, light, come into the world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. You no longer have a cloak of ignorance to falsehood. You now know the truth. Walk in the truth, in the light, as a true worshiper of Yeshua, Jesus, and he will never forsake you. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. In his love, Yeshayi. For your information. Masse Merkava's four faces of the living creatures conceal an encrypted order concerning cherubims and angels. Using all the letters that are composed in each enzyme, we have the following lion, ox, eagle, and man. Thus, we have a total of 14 letters translating to the following order. A, one angel, O, A, mil, X. Note, O, mil, and X must be defined. O, contrarily of on, on. Second part is of, one o'clock. So the word we're focusing on here is on. Mil, a unit of angular measurement equal to one over 64 hundredths of 360 degrees, which is a circle and used especially in artillery. An X to mark with an X. To decode the order, A, to an understandable meaning would be as follows. B, one angel on a angular mark, or the word N can be used for A. So you will have one angel on an angular mark. C, one angel on an angular measurement marked with an X. The encampment of Israel was spiritually guarded by cherubims also known as angels, at each angular measurement established by an enzyme pole planted in the ground. The encampment consisted of 16 angular marks and a total of 16 cherubims or angels surrounded the campsite's perimeter and tabernacle. The encrypted order alludes that the campsite was holy ground with Elohim in the midst of the encampment. No unclean thing could enter the guarded perimeter of the campsite unnoticed. This is noted in many scripture. The penalty was death. Pleasant to the sight. Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10 both speak about the holy encampment. In this short writing, Comparisons will be made between different scriptures to present you with a more in-depth look into the holy encampment. So we're going to compare chapters 1 and chapter 10. Ezekiel 126. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the as the appearance of a man above upon it over in chapter 10 verse 1 then i looked and behold in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim that appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne now we're going to compare ezekiel 1 16 with ezekiel 10 10 as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel 
here it says, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 25. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. And we'll look over to Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 4. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And chapter 1 again. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. In chapter 10. And the house was filled with the cloud. Selected verse, Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and by night in a pillar of fire. These are just a few examples to bear witness to chapters 1 and 10. As we continue on through chapter 10, Ezekiel speaks about a man clothed in linen. Exodus 28, 39. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitra of fine linen. Exodus 39, 27. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons. And the last question, is this a coincidence that the high priest and priest were clothes of linen. Man's thoughts of an earthen object such as a robe, burial linen, platter, spear, chalice, etc. are only medieval legends of nightly quest in search of an object of non-existence. The Holy Grail is not an earthen object. It is not made of gold, silver, brass, or cloth. It is a divinely given gift by Elohim. The pattern given to Moses in the mountain of God is the true Holy Grail. The holy encampment, Holy Grail pattern is not made with man's hand, intellect, or craftsmanship, but it is formed by the holy knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the one true God, the Holy One, Elohim. And this is written by Prophet Ishai who is the writer of this complete work that I am reading to you or that I am narrating to you. Now here is the testimony of the snowflake. Like manna, the snowflake falls throughout the earth and upon our faces. The heavens testify of our Lord's holy pattern to all his creation. When will Elohim's greatest creation testify? And we can see by looking at the snowflake, it is in the pattern of a six point star. The Magan David, the Holy Grail, the pattern given to Moses in the Mount of God. Pentateuch. The Holy Grail. Part 2, Pentateuch. Thus far we have seen his star. Now let us continue on. Many hundreds and hundreds of centuries ago, a hierarchy decision was made among scholars to conceal Ezekiel chapter 1. These same scholars are those that orchestrated the Israeli scholars who translated the Greek word Pentateuch. They claim Moses as the author of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Thus, the five books became widely known as the five books of Moses, also known as the Torah. Hence, the translation of the Greek word Pentateuch. But many critical scholars say Moses could not have written all these books. This has left a very chaotic literary schism of the Pentateuch among many rabbis and men of the cloth. As we define the word Pentateuch, we see it is a combination of two separate words. Penta, meaning five, tukos, meaning tool, implement, roll of writing, materials, which is a scroll, of or relating to the first five books, is akin to Greek word tukin, which means to make or build. 
the true definition is the five volumes, in other words, scrolls, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, of making or building the tool. There is no indication of Moses' name within Pentateuch, but there is mention of a tool. Tool, an instrument or apparatus used in accomplishing a task. Now the question is, what tool? Could this be the Masus Merkaba, the second part of the Holy Grail? And our continuing work to teach you the mysteries of the Ancient of Days, who is Elohim, the one true God, we bring to you the working of the chariot. Coming soon, Pentateuch. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And here is the reference page for all the references that were used um, in this writing. Once again, my father did this writing, uh, Prophet Ishai. May Elohim bless you and continue to enrich you with wisdom and understanding.